Hello my friends, it's Bruns here and welcome back to the channel and boy these patches are coming weekly so can we just take a moment to appreciate the hard work Gun is putting into this to just release patch after patch week by week just so we can have a game that is more balanced a game where they are ironing out the bugs can we just take a moment to appreciate that so well done gun thank you so much for all your effort so let's go through this new patch 19th of september is coming next tuesday and the big thing obviously we got some nerfs to some characters first one cc poison attacks this bug resulted in all cc attacks having a poison effect CC's normal attacks will no longer have a poison effect. Special Blend can still provide a poison attack only on her next strike, and Rubber Legs can still slow down victims already affected by poison. So we know what was going on here. As soon as she started attacking victims, they slow down and then she hit them again and then they slow down even more until they almost completely stopped and they just couldn't escape and then she ended up killing them. People were lobby dodging because of CC. So I'm quite glad to see that this is fixed. Now all those people that were relying on this build to get their kills and to get loads of XP or whatever they were getting are going to have to do something different, right? Because this is, this is just gone now and I'm really, really pleased to see this. Another fix we have is players blocking themselves. We resolved an issue where a player could block themselves themselves resulting in a matchmaking issues and error i don't know what this is but i'm glad this is fixed for some people and then we've got some changes to slaughterhouse now the fuse box which is next to the slaughterhouse door at the very end of the map that is not going to be there anymore and this is great because this was such a strong exit for the victims right because it was really out of the way and you could just go right there in the corner at the very edge of the map and do this and then just run out of the base and escape so i'm glad to see that this has moved now the other one valve handle spawns on slaughterhouse we've moved the spawn location of the valve handle on the side of the garage to be in a more high traffic area this is the area which was opposite to the fuse box next to the entrance to facility which is let's just be honest it's ridiculous that all this was so close together we've moved the spawn location of the valve handle on the side of the animal pen to be in a more high traffic area so animal pen i think they're talking about the holding pen and this is when you went through that narrow gap at the end of the holding pen and then you went around the corner and just there in the corner of the holding pen you will find the valve grab the valve run back to the basement switch on the pump and then the whole thing just kicked off that's not going to be there anymore i'm curious to see where the new locations are they say more high traffic area so I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be more in the middle of the map. I think it's a great change because this map was very victim sided. We got some tunes to some perks here and I'm, I'm really happy to see that they are already working on some perks. So the first tune up that we have here is for efficient grappler. So at the moment on level one, you have 10% chance to keep your bones craft after using a closing counter. Level two is 15%, level three is 25%. Now that's going to change to 10, 15 and 20%. So it's a nerf of five. 5% to level 3 so it's not massive change but significant enough considering that the bone scraps have already been nerfed this is an extra nerf to bone scraps actually and then there's efficient backstabber well in level 1 sneak attacks have a chance to not consume a bone scrap chance is 20% level 1 30% level 2 and 40% on level 3 so that's been nerfed heavily actually and on level 1 you're going to have 10% chance to keep the scrap level 2 is going to be 15% and level 3 is 20% so that's that's half of what it was on level 3. That's another big nerf to bone scraps. You can kind of see what they're going for here. They're trying to nerf the whole stun locking that is happening with Leatherface down the basement. Because the time that it took for Leatherface to recover, the victim had already collected a new bone scrap and then it was already ready to start stunning Leatherface again. So now with the reduction of bone scraps from the previous patch, plus the reduction on the chance of you consuming your bone scraps with on these perks, I think we're gonna see a lot less bone scraps during the match. At least that's what it looks like the devs are going for. Less bone scraps, less stunning of the family members. And also what they're trying to do, they're trying to tune the game around Leatherface rather than actually having to change Leatherface to make him immune to stuns or things like that. There's obviously still the door stunning problem but I think that's going to come in the next patch or future patch. Let's see. Right, moving on. The most controversial topic on this patch is Connie's ability cooldown and Leland's ability cooldown. So what they say is we have added to the base cooldown time for Connie's focused ability and also for Leland's lifesaver ability. Now, I'm not sure this is the answer for what is happening because people don't even use Connie's ability a lot of the time more than once in the game, especially if they're rushing. But Leland they do so I, I kind of feel that 
Leland's ability needed an extra cooldown anyway. But I think more than anything, what they could have done is simply start the match with their abilities charging at any point, maybe half or maybe full charge, I don't know. But just charging rather than adding more cooldown to it. So I don't know what you guys think. I'd love to hear down the comments about all this nerfing for the victims. Now, another thing they've done is escape restraints minigame. We have adjusted the minigame to escape restraints at the start of the match. It will now require slightly more taps to escape and the overall minigame will take slightly longer to complete. Strength and stealth still affect this minigame and players can build accordingly. Now, I didn't see that coming and I bet a lot of people didn't see that coming. What people have been saying is like victims and family, they have to start at the same time, get rid of the cutscenes. But one thing that I, I didn't think about and I think a lot of people didn't think about is one way to get around the problem of Leland or any other victim coming to start stunning Letterface during the cutscene is of course just increase the time they have to spend on the restraints and doing the minigame. I think it's a clever solution and I'm curious to see how that's being implemented and what the actual change is going to be during the gameplay. I think it's a very welcome change. And then the final thing, seven players requirement. We have reinstated the seven player requirement for lobbies to launch. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why they've done that in the first place, but I'm glad to see that this is back because a game with six people just was not working for any side. One of the sides was not going to have fun whenever that happened. So I'm glad to see that this is the requirement again. So lots of changes here, guys. Some quite controversial. I'm not sure some of these are the right choices for the balancing of the game. I'd love to hear what you guys think. As you know, I'm going to keep trying to keep you guys updated with any news that we get from Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Gun. If you're new, drop me a like, subscribe, and consider joining the channel for badges and more perks. Massive thanks to One Trick Wu Tang and Praise G Buzz for the support. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.